Inlay is a wonderful way to dress up a guitar visually. You can make an artistic statement and add your own personal touch. Mike Snyder is one of the best inlay artists I know. Not only does he do masterful inlay work, but he also builds some very beautiful electric guitars. I have asked Mike to talk about how he designs and executes a simple inlay. This particular inlay was done on an electric guitar being built for an advanced electric guitar building DVD that Mike and I are working on together. Mike makes it look easy, so I will let him explain how it's done. Thanks, Robbie. Inlay is actually not that difficult. It just takes practice, patience, and attention to detail. It also takes only a small number of tools and supplies to get started, like the one shown here. The first step is to come up with a design. This should have crisp, fine lines and should be relatively simple if it's your first try. You will also want several copies of your design for a multiple piece inlay. We chose this Gemini sign because we were both born on the same day in June. Go ahead and cut out a copy of your design and make sure it fits within the designated inlay area. Now choose your inlay materials and make sure they are big enough for your design. I chose white mother of pearl and some recon stone for this project, and now I'm cutting out a copy of the image for each piece. Next, you'll need to glue a copy of the image onto each piece to be cut out. I find that a bottle of super glue with a brush is perfect for this. Be careful not to glue your fingers together. This is a jeweler's saw, which is what you'll use to cut out the inlay. There are over a dozen different sizes of saw blades that fit into the saw frame. I usually use a 3 out size blade. Make sure the blade is installed with the teeth facing outward and pointing down. You also need to put a fair amount of tension on the blade. It should make a nice ping sound when you pluck it. You'll need a cutting block as well, which is nothing more than a piece of scrap wood with a notch cut out of it. This is where you'll place the material as you cut it. Clamp it to your bench so it's at about chest level. For this inlay, I need to start by removing some inner portions of the design. I mark these areas with an X and drill a hole through them so I can thread the saw blade through. Then I tension the blade again. You might have noticed that there's a vacuum hose attached to my cutting block. This sucks up the pearl dust which is not good for you to breathe. If you don't have a vacuum, be sure to wear a respirator. Now it's time to start cutting. Try your best to cut the line of your design right in half. This might sound impossible, but it's something to shoot for. You can always clean up the cut with a needle file afterwards. The key when cutting is to keep the saw blade as vertical and as perpendicular to the pearl as possible. Try to use as much of the blade as you can too. This will greatly extend the life of the blade. When you get to a corner, you need to keep the saw moving while you make the turn. Ideally, the saw stays straight forward while you move the pearl with your other hand. Often, you'll find yourself turning the saw too. That's okay. For an inside corner, make the turn just before reaching your line or else you will cut into the design. For an outside corner, make the turn just past the line for the same reason. Continue cutting out all of your pieces and be sure not to lose them. Once they're all cut out, see if they fit together. If they don't, you can clean up the edges with a needle file. These files come in a variety of sizes and profiles, including flat, round, half round, and more. When the pieces all fit, assemble the inlay on some wax paper. Now wick in some thin viscosity super glue, or CA glue, to make it one solid piece. Now we're ready to inlay this baby into the wood. Start by placing it where it's going to live and hold it down while you scribe around it with an X-Acto knife. If you prefer, you can temporarily glue it down with a tiny bit of CA glue while you scribe the outline and then remove it by sliding a razor blade underneath. You can rub some chalk dust into the line you've just made to help you see it better. To cut out the cavity, I use a Dremel tool with a router base attached to it and an 8th inch spiral downcut router bit. Adjust the tool so that it cuts the cavity to the same depth as the thickness of the material to be inlaid. Start at the center of the cavity and work your way outward in a clockwise motion, slowly creeping up on your scribed line. If you're using a smaller diameter router bit for a more detailed cavity, you probably don't want to make the full depth cut in one pass. Instead, make two or three shallower passes so you don't overheat or break the bit. Test to see if the inlay fits in the cavity. If it doesn't, note where it's tight and route these areas some more. If it feels tight, don't force it in. You'll risk breaking it and you do want to be able to get it out. When it does fit, you're ready to glue it in. There are several ways to do this. I'm going to use some 5 minute epoxy and I'll add some black dye. This will nicely fill in any gaps in the ebony. If you're inlaying into a different wood than ebony, color the epoxy accordingly. You can mix in sawdust or acrylic paint to color the epoxy as well. You can also use sawdust and super glue to fill the gaps. If you use the epoxy method, mix it up and spread it all around the cavity. 
Don't be shy. Any squeeze out will help to fill the gaps. And by the way, you will have some gaps, so don't get too sad about it. Once your cavity is all gooey, place the inlay in it and push it all the way in. Then place a piece of wax paper over it and clamp something flat on top of that. If you use something clear like what I'm using, you can see all the action underneath. Let the epoxy cure for the appropriate amount of time. Now you're ready to sand the inlay flush with the wood. You'll want to use a nice, flat, hard sanding block for this. Start with about 100 grit and work your way up to at least 220 or 320. And shazam, you're done and ready for finish. Thanks, Mike. Although Mike has shown us a fairly simple design, he uses the same techniques for his more complicated inlays. However, this is a good starting point, and the more you practice, the better you'll get.